Betty White in Life with Elizabeth, featuring Del Moore. Incident number one in the life of Elizabeth occurred because of Bill Dunning. That's all I remember. I don't know who Bill Dunning is any more than you do. Let's go find out. Elizabeth, who's Bill Dunning? Well, I seem to remember this episode's about somebody named Bill Dunning. Oh, they're dunning you to pay your bills. I remember now, the collection agency... Sorry, I didn't see him. I fixed the fuse, sweetie. Remind me to get some 20 amp fuses the next... You're staring, Elizabeth. Alvin. Hmm? How are you fixed for shoulders? I'll go get them. I'll have to give them a coat. I think the time has come for me to tell you the whole story. Good. Time to stop staring and start sharing. Well, first of all... Wait a minute. I... Wait a minute. I think I made a profound remark. Stop no, you staring. Uh -uh. No? Go ahead. Read this. Dear customer, through an oversight, you have neglected to pay for the $4.95 purchase you made at the Emporium Department Store on January 17th. The Emporium has seen fit to turn your account over to us. At this stage of the game, we always take the attitude that to err is human, to forgive divine. We can't wait to forgive you. Please send your check immediately, payable to either Mr. Steele or Mr. Fist, care of the Steele Fist Collection Agency. How about that? Is that a threat or is it? They can't wait to forgive us. I don't see anything threatening about it. <laughs> Well, how about the Steel Fist Agency? Uh, I bet they had to hunt all over town to find two men with the names Mr. Steel and Mr. Fist. They probably had to settle for that. They couldn't find anybody named Mr. Brass or Mr. Knuckles or, or Mr. Broken Bottle or, or, or a midget named Sawed Off Shotgun. Are you mad or scared? I'm mad. I hate threats. Why? You scare me. Oh. <laughs> now, look, why don't you settle the whole thing and pay the bill? Because I don't think I bought anything at the Emporium on that day for four ninety five. You don't think? Oh, I, I was in the store around that time. I was buying a present for your boss. And you know I'd never spend that much money on Mr. Fuddy. Maybe that's why I never get raised. Why don't you just forget the whole thing, honey? Forget it? How can... They won't let me... <clears throat> Look at this. Mm. This is a second letter. You notice it's on cheaper paper. Yeah. Customer. I'm not even a dear customer anymore. <laughs> Mr. Steele didn't get your check for $4.95, so he consulted with Mr. Fist. Mr. Fist didn't get your check either. They were forced to conclude you didn't send the check because Mr. Steele and Mr. Fist very seldom lie to each other. Are you still scared? Well, sure I am. What kind of a mind would sit in a dingy office and write up a letter like that? You don't... You, they might do anything. So you got two little letters. Two! Look here. Look. This one came about three months ago, and this one arrived about a month later, and since then they've been coming in every second day. What did you tell Here's me? Here's number three. Why didn't you tell me about it? You Because I'm 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 sure I didn't buy the whatever it was for four ninety five. This is on fool's cap with lines. This is the cheapest stationery we have. We want you to feel at home. No to you, no check for four ninety five. The next one was just a red card. It says, well, I tell you, John, it's a regular war of nerves. Are you sure that you didn't buy anything at the Emporium for $4.95? I'm absolutely almost positive. Well, that almost isn't too good, I'll tell you that. Hm. Here's one that isn't addressed to you. It's addressed to Mrs. Mudd. Read it. We realize your name isn't Mudd, but it will be if we don't get the $4.95. They alternate between threats and sarcasm. This one's sarcasm. Hmm. Gee, they must have a group of psychiatrists or something down there right now. Oh, look, look out the bat. Hey, look out the bat. Yes, it is. Weapons. See? Funny? Put this in your wallet with the rest of the moths. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> they reduce me to a state of quivering nerve ends and you laugh. You're supposed to get mad. Honey, I'm sorry. Look, I'll admit their methods are a bit odd, but I don't see anything to get upset about. <laughs> oh, you don't. Uh, well, maybe this will strike a little closer to home. <clears throat> what does it say? Well, it's, it's another card. It's burned all around the edges. Go on, read it. 
You wouldn't let this happen to your husband's job for a measly four ninety five, would you? I don't get it. Well, what did they burn around the edges with? They're threatening to have you fired. <laughs> Elizabeth, it seems to me that you could keep track of your purchases a little better than this. Alvin, the least we can do is stay on the same team. Look at here. I'm going crazy. Look at this. This one says, we're waiting. This one says, all right for you. <laughs> this is a piece of the rope we're at the end of. Those dozy busybodies will be calling Mr. Fuddy just because you can't remember a little purchase of $4.95. <laughs> oh, honey, what are you crying about? I'm scared. Oh, there's nothing to be scared of. After all, they haven't threatened you or anything. Yes, they have. Oh, they have. $4.95. This came today. Well, what is it? It's a, a doll with him sticking in it. They want me to die. Elizabeth, this is an advertisement for the dress shop down the street. This is a pincushion. Then I'm going to live? Yeah, I'll check with the witch doctor. I can't for the life of me understand how you could just forget a little thing like a four ninety five. I shall leave you at this point, Elizabeth. Alvin. Me? That's the guilty look, Alvin. Do you have something to confess to your Elizabeth? Uh, well, I... I, I did buy some golf balls at the Emporium. And with the tax, they might just possibly have come to four ninety-five. They were on sale. It was, it was just... You may leave me at this point. Thank you. There's nothing for you to be ashamed of, is there, Elizabeth? You better go cheer him up. Aren't you ashamed? Incident number two in the life of Elizabeth occurred because of the monster. As I recall it, the monster came stalking into their home one evening right after dinner. It's hard to get rid of a monster, especially one with green eyes. on fire someday doing that. Yeah. Hey, you're missing a good show. Althea Swinburne's playing two different parts. What are you stalking? Ants. Look, huh? They go all the way across there, and up there, and across under there, and down there. Huh. Althea who? Swinburne. Say, why don't you uh, put some powder where they start? Well, I don't know where they start. They, they, they're going in circles. Well, they start from outside. Put some powder on the windowsill. I did that this morning. This is a detour. Who's Elsie Swinburne? Swinburne. Look, honey, if you put the powder all along here instead of all in one spot, it would work. Well, I'm going to miss the last act. Come on, watch your work, honey. I don't even know who she is. Well, sure you do, sweetie. Remember the movie the other night? She was sort of third assistant hairdresser to Madame uh, Pompadour. What? Oh, you mean the one with the... Oh, uh... yeah. Say, where have you been? She's a big star now. Well, I didn't know the picture was that old. Oh, honey, you're just behind times. Come on. No, I think I'll stay here with the ants. One old aunt to another. How do you like it? I come in here and I spend two minutes yakking with you and I miss the whole last half of the act. I was under the impression we were discussing a matrimonial problem. What matrimonial problem? I thought we were talking about the eradication of insects. But I find we were just yakking about ants. You mad at me? No. No, of course not. Let's yak about our happy marriage. That a girl. I thought for a minute or two you were mad at me. <laughs> Danny, where are the matches? Tell me more about healthy Swinburne. Elthea, E-L-T-H-I-A. Honey, I can never find a match in this house. Alvin. Hmm? Do you love me? Well, sure. Say, whatever happened to that old cigarette lighter I had? Alvin, I just asked you if you loved me. Honey, of course I love you. Look, now, I had an old cigarette lighter around here. That kiss made me feel a little bit like unhealthy Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, I get it. Here. <clears throat> How's that? Well, you can do better, but I'll accept that. <laughs> Guess where your matches are. Matches? Inside watch pocket. How about that? You ought to hang this up, honey. Althea Swinburne would never... <clears throat> What's this? Oh, that's a movie magazine. Picture of her in there someplace. Someplace? 
It was turned right to the page. Oh, there she is. She's healthy, all right. Funny part of it is she can act. You should have seen her on television just now. She played two parts, two sisters. One was the grand lady of the manor, and the other one was real slinky. You can talk plainer than that. <laughs> well, let's go relax. Oh, don't, uh, don't lose the magazine, honey. Alvin. Mm -hmm. May I see your wallet, please? Sure. When did you start asking? <laughs> mm -hmm. What happened to that picture of me? Oh, yeah, I meant to tell you about that. You remember when I got that last traffic ticket? For going too slowly on the freeway? I remember. Well, when the cop asked to see my driver's license, I accidentally tore your picture in half getting out the license. <laughs> Alvin, that was six months ago. Yeah, I know. Well, I just keep forgetting to ask you for another one. You know how it is. Well, there's such a thing as pasting a picture together. Yeah, I guess I should have, but you know, I just, just didn't think about it. Alvin. Hmm? When would you like the divorce? <laughs> what did you say? Let's face it, you married the wrong type of girl. Well, she, I sure did. I married one with rocks in her head. What kind of talk is this? All these I, years, I thought we were so happy. We weren't. Oh, I was happy, but you were searching. Searching. Oh, don't get melodramatic, Elizabeth. Oh, it's easy for you to say don't get melodramatic. None of this touches you. You have a heart as cold as, as, cold as a pickle. Uh, pickles aren't cold. You see, all you care about is my choice of words rather than what I'm saying. Well, go to her with your pickled heart. Go to who? To whom? To whom? Go to whom? You've always, always gone for the same type, Alvin. Every girl you ever went with was a tall, statuesque blonde except me. Like whom? Who? Who? <laughs> like Gloria Applegate in college. Oh, honey, now you know. And Francine Smith in high school. And Purine West in junior high. <laughs> and Gwyneth Johnson in 24th Street Elementary. Gwyneth Johnson was a nine-year-old skinny little brunette. She grew into a tall, statuesque blonde, and you knew she would at the time. <laughs> Shall we start talking sensible, darling? Darling. You say it so easily. Darling, sweetheart, honey. Just like a parrot. Your darling would have more snap to it if you were saying it to Alfia Swinburne. Swinburne? You pronounce it your way, I'll pronounce it mine. Is she what started all this? Let's put it another way, Alvin. She finished all this. Oh, Elizabeth, come back here. Elizabeth! Elizabeth, don't, don't tear that magazine. Very well, Alvin. Oh, don't look so stricken, my dear. I think I've known this for quite some time. My dear. You'll take care of the ants after I'm gone. Now, you sit down and listen to me, Elizabeth. Sit down. You see, Doc... You see, Alvin, some men just prefer a, a certain type of woman. But they marry the opposite type just to spite their subconscious. I married you because I loved you. You notice you used the past tense? You loved me. As in... You used to love me. Used to. Yes, and you're also what? used to me. I didn't say that. Don't yell, Alvin. Right. Now, I think what you ought to do is find a girl like Elthea and forget me. After all, the magazine says she isn't married yet. The two of you could get married and live quietly somewhere. Where... You can be happy. Now that's more like it. Now we can talk. Ellen, why did you marry me? I'm short and dumpy. You're not. You're beautiful. Present tense. Didn't we take each other for better or for worse? Oh, there's a compliment. I'm sorry. I'm so much worse than you took me for. Honey, I married you because I love you. You married me because you were afraid of Mama. Oh, for goodness sake.
<laughs> Ridiculous. If this is the type of girl you prefer, I don't see why you should be stuck with me. All right, Elizabeth, I'll marry her the day after tomorrow. I'm busy right now. After all, marriage is just a word. It doesn't have to be a sentence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you hear what I said, Alvin? I said matrimony is, is just... What are you marking up her face for? Why not? Contest is on this side of the page. You... You bought the magazine for a contest? Didn't buy it at all. Found on the bus. Sit down. Look, honey, if we multiply certain numbers by nine, we might want a boat or something. Okay, get a pencil. You're good at this sort of stuff. There's one over there. Nine by nine. Alvin, six. do you mind if I do just one thing? Could I put a mustache on Althea Swinburne? Be my guest. Nine times nine is 73, 60. Elizabeth. Hmm? Thanks for getting jealous. You're welcome. <laughs> Incident number three in the life of Elizabeth occurred because, in Elizabeth and Alvin's case, the good neighbor policy not only extends next door, but clear across the street to the home of Peggy and Jack Boniface. Answer it. I made the sandwiches. You're eating them, too. Mm -hmm. Hey, honey. Mm. Hello? Hi. Don't turn it back up. Hi, Jack. How are you? Jack Boniface. What can we do for you, Jack? Yeah, Elizabeth, now, this might sound kind of silly, but Peg's Uncle Hubert is with an agency. Yeah, and Peg and I have been writing a bunch of jingles for the agency for Uncle Hubert, for the television. You know, uh, yeah, uh, for fun, for free. Unless, of course, maybe they're good enough to be paid for them. Well, we wondered if you'd be good enough to listen to the jingles before Uncle Hubert listened to the jingles. <laughs> Peg's Uncle Hubert is lost in the jungle. Oh, my God, ask him to do anything. Uh, Jack, is there anything we can do? Well, we wondered if uh, you'd see if we're on the right track. Hmm? He wants us to help track him. Oh, my gosh. Listen. Uh, help, help. Look, Jack, you bring the maps over. Alvin's good at this sort of thing. Now, don't worry. We're out in the den, and you just come right on in. The back door's open. Uh, right. Right. Bye-bye. Okay, honey. Bring all the stuff. Are you sure they don't mind listening to Jim? Well, of course not. Uh, incidentally, Elizabeth said something about bringing over some maps for some reason or other. Maybe they're going on a trip or something. Anyway, there's one in the car. Good. Here. Did they say what jungle the old boy was lost in? No, and you know, with all the good intentions in the world, I can't see what kind of help working. Alvin, put your shoes on. Jack could spend more time watching Uncle Hubert and less time washing the car. How about yours? Oh. Well, it's Peggy's Uncle Hubert, and you know how nervous and high-strung she is. Oh, gosh. So yeah. if they act a little strange, now don't be... Here they are. Now listen, just remember the one thing we have to do is stay calm. Right, nothing happened. Here we are, kids. We're all here. Come on in. Hi. Yes, Hi. How are you? Hi, Alvin. Alvin. Yeah. Oh, Come on on fine. Okay. Thank you. Hope you don't mind our bringing our problems to you. Listen, what are friends for? Here's the mess, Alvin. Still the one we have. Oh, well, that'll give us a starting point anyway. Well, how long has it been since you've seen him? Who? Peggy Dunkel. Oh, a couple of weeks. Peggy wants to sing to him over the phone. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Cracking up. Oh, <coughs> Where was Uncle Hubert last seen, Peggy? With Zeros. Oh, he was. <laughs> Show him the one about the lion and the tiger. What's he so happy about? I, I think they're both cracking up. Nerves, nerves. Got it, got it, good, good. Here we go. Now remember, this is visual. The angry lion says... And the peevish tiger says... That's but the very it. best is the fit you get when, when you wear fits in the shoes. <laughs> well, of course, it sounds much better with music. Now, be frank with us. Do you think Uncle Hubert will like it? Well, not where he is. I, Look, I you don't... can sing him the song after we find him. Now, the uh, estuary... You two just relax. ...appears to start right here, honey. Yeah, see, Sit now, there's, a, there's an X here. I bet that's where he started from. Mm -hmm. Follow this line. They seem to be more interested in their trip than our drink. Shh, honey, I think they're off their trolleys. He went inland here. Yeah. And uh, through the estuary and up the Sepulveda River to the yeah. Wilshire River. Mm. And... Wilshire River? <laughs> this is a map of Southern California. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wondered how Santa Monica got in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be here. Brazil. Thanks for listening to the yeah. jingle. 
Jingle? Wait a minute. You didn't say jingle. You said jungle. Wait. Well, I mean, on the phone, you said that Peggy's Uncle Hubert was lost in a jungle. That's why the map. No, 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 no. I said Peggy's Uncle Hubert was with an ad agency, and he needed some jingles for television commercials. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so much like Uncle Hubert was lost in the jungle. Isn't that it? Come on back and sit down, for heaven's sake. Isn't that silly? Uh, <laughs> Well, listen, as long as we're all going in the same direction, why, why don't you show us some more of your commercials? Okay. I like the one about what's-his-name shoes. Well, Fitzsimmons. 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 They, is there a Fitzsimmons shoe company? Oh, no. Oh, please. Oh. Well, don't you worry. If anybody named Fitzsimmons ever does make shoes, you're ready for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you show them one about the drugstores, honey. Uncle Hubert has two or three drugstores that need jingles. Now, this one isn't quite finished, but I think you can get the idea. Hey, yeah. <clears throat> now, remember, this is visual. D is for drugs. DR is for doctor. DRU is for doctor plus you. <laughs> you got a little mixed up there. DRUG is for drug again. <clears throat> Remove the D and you've got rug, which we also sell. Remove the R and you've got UG, which is what some of our medicines taste like, but they're good for you. Which leaves G, which is a vitamin, which we also sell. That's as far as we got. How about uh, drugs, spell backwards, jugurdles, which we have? Elizabeth. <laughs> now, look, the thing that you didn't do, you left out the name of the store, and to me, that's very important. Well, there's not much you can do with Fifth Street Pharmaceutical Supply House, Alvin. You follow me? Yeah. Well, are there any other sponsors that need jingles? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're here, here's the other list. Sometimes the slogans help. Hmm, Muskrat Rambler Limited, 500 miles to the gallon of gas. Yeah, that's one of those little foreign cars. Yeah, but 500 miles to the gallon, wow. Well, sure, they're so small they can't hold people. Hey, how about, how about the Pumpity Pump gas station? Oh, it's got Pumpity a good Pump. one for we that. We have a good one for that. Now, there are just a few words missing, but I think you'll get the idea. Now, <clears throat> now remember, this is visual. Pumpity, pumpity, pump. <laughs> la, 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 la. Pumpity, pumpity, pump. La, 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 la. La, 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 Gee, I wish that Fitzsimmons outfit sold shoes. I think the kids have a hit there, honey, really do. Well, now, wait a minute. We, we'll find something here, just a Fitz second. Simmons. What about this original clothes cleaner? Mm, that's a gyp. No, no, we sent off for that. The guy says, don't bother with these new detergents. Do your clothes the way your ancestors did them. Ancestors? Yeah. So we sent in 25 cents and he sent us a rock. <laughs> $23 postage. <laughs> <laughs> How about the Fitzpatrick's restaurants? No, 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 we, we tried that. Nothing rhymes. Well, listen, you already have it. Here's it. Well, sure you have. Uh, where's the one about the lions and tigers? With a... Mm -hmm. me? Right here. Right here. Sure, here. Look, just change these two words. Yeah, now try it. The angry lion says... And the peevish tiger says... But the very best bit is the bit you get when you eat Fitzpatrick foods. What's next? We have the, uh, got the whirl on the string dancing school. The ladies reupholstering incorporated. Mm, that's a corset company. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, I think I'm getting something. Wait, listen. How about this? Honey, hmm? um, uh, it's delicate. It's delicate, the delicatessen for you. <laughs> Jim Dandy, Haberdashery, Fitzgerald's Bootery. That's it. Wait a minute, you weren't listening, honey. It's delicate. Bootery. Delicate. Bootery's a shoe company. Get out of the way, honey. Look, now wait. Get a hold of it. Look, you don't get, have those walls. Get that thing. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, the lion and tiger. Now, here, we just changed Fitzsimmons to Fitzgerald. That is it. Right? Yeah. The angry lion says... It's and the peevish tiger hey. says, but the very hey. best bit is the bit you get hey. It's half-half pastrami. <laughs> Say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye everyone. Now, look, I think that'll you do it. Be it. Be I think I'll be
Now here to say goodbye to you is the lovely star of our show, Betty White. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you, everybody. Thank you. Maybe you'd like to hear how the jingle wound up. It's delicate. It's delicate. Betty, Betty, say goodbye to the people. <laughs> goodbye, people. Thank you.